I'd like to begin this video by saying that the people I'm going to criticize are also people who I admire and respect. In my own personal life, these people have had an informative and helpful influence regarding philosophy, morality, politics, and more. But criticize them I will, because the stakes are very high, and because I feel duped by some of them. And also because I want to show the importance of finding the truth to the best of your ability on your own. Listening to the arguments of others with your own ears and making up your own mind. Do not seek shelter in consensus. Do not seek shelter in the wisdom of famous figures. You have an incredible brain. You can think for yourself. I'd also like to address the Reagan Republicans, the traditional right, the small c conservatives. You who have conserved nothing. You who have lost every battle of the culture war. And now here comes a movement, young, passionate, informed, eager for a return to traditional values, eager to defend Western civilization from its many threats, both within and without. What could be more conservative? And your response to this movement is to lie about them, to smear them, to slander them, to build them up as some sort of bad guy. So, for example, the first target of my criticism, Ben Shapiro, the Hebrew hammer, fast talking Ben. He's great in those debates, isn't he? Yeah, he's really good at wrecking the feminists and the SJWs. In other words, the lowest hanging fruit. Seriously, anyone can do that. Even most women don't identify as feminists. It's very easy to take them apart. But yes, thank you, Ben Shapiro, for your contributions to the fight against feminism and the radical left. I, like many, have gotten plenty of enjoyment from the Thug Life videos, the mic drops in the debates. It's all been very entertaining. But let's, uh, let's hear what Ben Shapiro has to say about the alt-right, the identitarian movement. And again, let's remember that the alt-right is a diffuse movement with many different elements. And it even has different names sometimes. Are the European identitarians the alt-right? In a way, yes. What's the alt-light? What do they agree on? What do they disagree on? The alt-right has different problems and different goals to deal with in the United States, and it has different problems and goals in Europe. But there are some core principles that they all agree on, which are the races and the sexes are different, and we need to acknowledge that. That is not a fringe view. That is not an extremist view. That is a view held by scientists who study the human genome. Time magazine not too long ago ran an article entitled Race is Real, and it talked about how there are diseases that affect some races and not others, the differences in IQ, the differences in behavior exhibited by different racial groups. The alt-right believes that not all cultures are equal. That's a pretty conservative position. The West is the best. America is the best. The alt-right believes in defending the West, preserving it, seeing it thrive. But this is what Ben Shapiro has to say about this movement. It's evil. The people who comprise this movement are garbage. They are disgusting. They are 
human debris. To say these things is the exact same as Hillary Clinton describing Trump supporters as deplorable. It shows the exact same lack of understanding and detachment from the reality that's really going on at a grassroots level. So this is what Ben has to say about the alt-right. Got some quotes here. I don't care about ethnicity. It makes no difference to me. The only thing that makes a difference to me are the ideals of the people coming over the border. End quote. Because the disgusting human debris of the alt-right are actually concerned about those things. Another quote. I don't think culture and race are inseparable. End quote. I've got some questions, Mr. Shapiro. Are you concerned with the ethnic composition of European nations? Or does Europe also have to undergo massive demographic changes and hope that the new population will adopt the correct ideals? How will you ensure that the ideals you uphold, the ideals you identify as the values of Western civilization, how will you ensure that the populations of immigrants from all over the world adopt to those values? Is there some sort of religious test? Are you going to knock on their doors? Hello, are you guys being Western today? You describe the West, Western values as Judeo-Christian, but you oppose the Muslim ban. So, where do you stand on that? Do you accept that Islam is Judeo-Christian? Or do you deny that it is, and therefore it is not a Western value, and therefore what's your stance on the mass numbers of Muslim migrants coming into Europe and throughout the West? You call yourselves the intellectuals. You call yourselves the dark web. Your slogan is facts don't care about your feelings. And yet you don't seem to have the guts to talk about these issues. And you describe the people who do, who have the courage and the curiosity to talk about this question. Well, they're just disgusting people. They're human debris. Culture and race are inseparable. Okay, but they might be linked in some way, great or small. Ben, I can convert to Judaism, just like someone can adopt Western values or be convert to Catholicism. But I cannot become an Ashkenazi, okay? I cannot say, well, I've converted to Judaism now. I practice Judaism. Can I please have my 120 IQ points? It doesn't work like that. An African can convert to Roman Catholicism. Does that make them a European? We'll come to these questions later. Next, I want to talk about Sam Harris. Sam Harris not too long ago, goes on The Bill Maher Show, HBO, and rightly declares that Islam is the mother load of bad ideas. But how does he describe the people in Europe on the front lines having to deal with this bad idea, trying to stop it from spreading throughout Europe and then the West? Well, he calls them far-right extremists. What is this? Why not sit down and talk with someone on the identitarian side? Talk with someone on the alt-right? Because here's the thing, Sam. As you live in your Los Angeles mansion and chatter with celebrities on HBO, the mosques keep going up, and the churches keep coming down. 
and the boats don't stop coming. How dare you describe the people who are actually trying to stop this madness as dangerous far-right fascistic extremists. How dare you describe those people, the people who have seen their own communities transform in front of their eyes into something they never imagined. Then we have Jordan Peterson, probably the, the most disappointing case here. In two moments, Jordan Peterson really disappointed me. First one was a debate that he had alongside Stephen Fry on his team, and the debate was against uh, a woman who writes for the New York Times, whose name I didn't bother to remember, and the idiotic, moronic, charlatan, Michael Eric Dyson. And because of Jordan Peterson's radical individualism, the solution to all these problems is the individual, the individual, be an individual, we're all individuals, individual, individual, individual. Because of that mindset, Jordan Peterson walked right into a trap. Michael Eric Dyson, who really had no business being on the same stage as Peterson, no business tying his shoelaces, was able to put Peterson in a conundrum. Peterson, what do you call a nation? We are individuals, yes, but we are also social creatures. We form societies. We are happiest in societies with human-to-human -human interaction. The best way to find yourself wallowing in depression is to be alone, to be atomized, isolated. What do you call a nation? What do you call a country? Where's your individualism, individualism there? And in the same debate, Peterson is asking the other side, can you please tell me, when do you think the left goes too far? Because we all ad admit, we all recognize when the right goes too far. And instead of asking the question, they say, no, okay, well, first you tell us, what does it look like when the right goes too far? And Peterson obliges. He says, well, they went too far in Charlottesville, showing a complete lack of knowledge of what happened in Charlottesville. Briefly, I will explain. You had a group of people, the alt-right, the identitarians, whatever, who had a legal permit and the protection of the First Amendment to hold a rally. The rally never happened because the black left-wing mayor of Charlottesville allowed them to be set upon by Antifa and the police did not protect them. If Antifa had not attacked them, if the mayor and the police had allowed them to hold their rally at the base of the Confederate statue that was being torn down, in my estimation, there would have been no violence. Because it was not a violent movement. It was not a violent rally. And then, in the same debate, Peterson says, Another example of the right going too far, where he says, well, it's threatening to go too far in identitarian Europe, showing a complete lack of knowledge and understanding of the European identitarian movement. First of all, it's not even all on the right. Let me just explain what's happening in Spain, for example. You have País Basco, Basque country, in the north. It is predominantly governed by far-left parties, and it is highly identitarian. The Basques have a distinct linguistic history. Their language isn't even Indo-European. Nobody knows where it comes from. They have a distinct DNA. I remember watching a documentary about them in college, in my social sciences course, a documentary about the distinct, mysterious DNA of the Basque people. And they're very tied to their identity. And there's a separatist movement. And just today, I read an article uh, which said, you know, there's nothing racist about 
wanting to preserve the Basque ethnicity and prevent it from going extinct. But guess what happens here in Spain? Which, remember, it, it is not a really unified country. It's a, it's a collection of autonomous regions. And some want more autonomy, some want independence completely. So the Basque identitarians, do you know what the Spanish centrists call them? Racists. Then we have the Catalan independence movement and the Catalan identitarians, people who in Catalonia feel more Catalan. They don't feel Spanish. They believe they have a distinct linguistic history. Uh, they are a distinct people. Catalonia is not Spain, is one of their slogans. Guess what the Spanish centrists call them? Nazis and xenophobes. But then, this is where it all gets fucking ridiculous. When the Spanish nationalists come on the scene, the people who wave the Spanish flag, respect the monarchy, believe in a unified Spain, wear these colors, the red and gold. Do you know what the leftists and the Catalans and the Basque people call the Spanish nationalists? Fascists and xenophobes. We're all going insane here. Because we aren't allowed to properly talk about fundamental questions. Who are we? Can we be proud of who we are? Can we identify with our group, as everyone else does? And then you've got the intellectual dark web, the oh-so-intellectual, courageous, brash bad boys with their facts don't care about your feelings slogans. And they are, they are incapable of even talking with any of these people, addressing the, their concerns, understanding the situation. Then you have Generation Identity, or the, the Defend Europe movement. Are they considered the alt-right? Probably. There's a lot in common. Generation Identity is like the alt-right, in that it is non-violent. It's unlike some of the alt-right, in that it's not concerned with an ethno-state. It simply wants to say, look, Catalonia, Basque Country, Scotland, Northern Italy, yeah, we've all got our individual squabbles, independence movements here, quarrels, but one thing we can all agree on is that we are Europeans, and the European continent is our home. And we'd like to see it defended and protected from threats within and without. According to Jordan Peterson, that's a fascistic stance. Generation Identity, the Defend Europe movements, they are non-interventionists. They are trying to save the same Western civilization that Jordan Peterson goes on and on and on about. But rather than talking to someone from that movement, Jordan Peterson describes these people as a dangerous, far-right movement of extremists. And he calls the alt-right, in general, losers. The second thing that disappointed me about Jordan Peterson was an hour-long interview he does with Douglas Murray. Uh, I've linked to it below if you want to watch it. And it's the same thing. For the majority of the hour, he spends the whole time whining and warning about the rise of the identitarian right, the alt-right, especially in Europe. He has no idea what's going on here. And of all the things that he could be complaining about, and opposing and warning of to choose the identitarian Europeans is absurd, or as he would say, absurd. And I'm sparing Douglas Murray because he is very brave, much braver on these issues than the others. But in this particular interview, he just plays along. He lets Peterson say these things. He doesn't challenge them. He even agrees. Oh yeah, I get worried too. Mr. Murray, in your best-selling book, 
you say yourself, one of the ways we can solve this problem, the problem of immigration, identity, and Islam, the subtitle of your book, is to have an honest conversation about who is Europe for. That's the conversation, that's the question that the identitarians are trying to have and to answer. And again, while you're having your hour-long interviews and going on your speaking tours, the boats keep coming. The mosques keep going up and the churches keep coming down. So, what's your solution? <sighs> like I said, the fundamental question is, who is the West for? Who is of the West? The Dalai Lama came right out and said it very recently. Europe is for the Europeans. That's exactly what the alt-right and the Defend Europe movement and the Generation Identity movement have been saying this whole time. What defines a European? Well, despite all the flowery language of the classical liberals and the cuckservatives, <laughs> to be a European is not simply a question of adopting my values. There is such a thing as the ethnic, indigenous, European. The more difficult question is, who is America for? Now, I talked about this in the video I put up the other day. America has become a proposition nation. Anyone willing can become an American. But that doesn't mean that America can't have immigration policies. That doesn't mean it can't have a protected border. And it hasn't always been this open and, and this diverse of a population. Until the 1965 Immigration Act, America was 90% white, 90% populated by descendants of Europe. America, the United States, is an offshoot of European civilization. You could say it was meant to be an improvement of European civilization. The 1965 Immigration Act literally changed the face of America. But if you want to talk about these things, according to Reagan Republican, again, Ben Shapiro is just such a basic Republican partisan. He's a never-Trumper. He doesn't see the importance of these new movements trying to inject some goddamn life into the right and maybe win back some ground in the culture war. He, ha he has no crazy, uh, not crazy, he has no courageous views. Yeah, he takes on the feminists, he takes on the SJWs, anyone can do that. But here now we have a difficult question. Who's America for? And the people who want to ask this question and talk about it are human debris. Go fuck yourself. Seriously. What is the solution? In Europe's case, Nationalism and identitarianism, contrary to what Peterson thinks, will save Europe. Or, if we do nothing, Europe will crumble under the weight of mass immigration from the third world, and Europe will fall to Islam. Where will your Western values be then? Where will your individualism get you then? In the United States, well, you have a choice. You could reverse the 1965 Immigration Act, ensure that the United States remains an offshoot of European civilization, populated by a majority of people who are the descendants of Europe, or you can say that that doesn't matter, do nothing, and hope that everyone embraces American values whatever those are. The people who talk about these values act as if they've never changed, as if values don't change. 
Again, I talked about how do you enforce this? How are you going to ensure that Judeo-Christian values are adopted by people who aren't Judeo-Christian? What are you going to do when the demographics tip and the people who do identify with Judeo-Christian values become the minority? And the people who don't give a damn about them or prefer something totally different are the majority. In any case, it is appalling and it is disappointing that people like the three that I've mentioned, especially Shapiro, <laughs> get so emotional about this and smear and attack the alt-right rather than sitting down and having a debate or even better, a conversation with someone from the alt-right, someone from the Defend Europe movement. I find it incredible that the best interview I've seen of someone who's not on the alt-right with someone who is was the interview conducted by Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson, a black American. He had the balls and the guts and the courage and the intellectual capacity to talk to someone on the alt-right, honestly, fairly, but big bad Ben Shapiro can't. Oh so wise Jordan Peterson won't. And if you can't bring yourselves to have a conversation with someone on the alt-right, to have a debate, or to stand with them, help them develop better arguments, eliminate the bad ones, the bad ideas, sharpen their positions, amplify their voice, help them in the fight against the mother load of bad ideas. If you can't even bring yourself to do any of that, then please, get out of the way. Take care, see you next time.